Yeah, hello and welcome to our third part of the lecture series, the tokenization of everything. And um, I'm really looking forward uh, to tell you today something about the tokenization as an enabler for innovative services. And in the other two parts uh, of our uh, lectures, um, we already discussed the concept of tokenization. I explained a little bit the background, what distributed ledger technology actually is, how tokenization can be defined. Um, in the last part, we uh, dived into the design of a token, what are properties, uh, what are characteristics uh, that have to be considered while implementing or representing an object on a distributed ledger. And uh, in this lecture, I want to dive into the idea of using tokenization to enable innovation and innovative services. And I think um, tokenization allows a very interesting concept to increase uh, collaboration and cooperation between different industries. Um, for instance, as we can see later, we have a re-engineering or redesign of customer journeys. Um, we have a process improvement and of course the potential to adapt existing business models. And for the start into this lecture, I just want to recap the opportunities and benefits of tokenization with you. Here it is important to keep in mind that the different use cases have to be assessed individually uh, because every use case comes with individual benefits and also disadvantages. And therefore, um, I want to highlight the most important application areas for tokenization. Uh, on one side, uh, we have the Bitcoin and altcoins, uh, who somehow created a new uh, kind of currency for the purpose of payment. The idea is to establish more efficient peer-to-peer uh, -peer transactions by making uh, intermediaries and third parties obsolete. Uh, then we have uh, a utility token where um, software or license is represented uh, to easily assess access uh, services and software and to uh, facilitate the enforcement of usage rights. Then we have a security token uh, as a successor of initial coin offerings. Um, the idea is to make shareholding more easy and um, allow fractional uh, ownership of these kinds of new digital financial instruments. Then we have stable coins. The idea of stable coins is that we assign the value of this coin to an existing currency. And here's a lot of dynamic in the market because having a digital euro uh, on a blockchain or DLT would be a prerequisite for um, a decentralized market infrastructure. And um, it will be dependent uh, uh, which components of a DLT will eventually find its way uh, for a digitized towards a digitized euro or a digitized dollar. And on the other side, we have existing bankable assets, of course, here. And the difference is that the token is consistently assigned to a stock and bond. Uh, however, we still have the possibilities of cost reduction for um, emission, for the transfer and the storage of this trader products. Here it will be important in the near future if a legal framework can be established. Then we have the non-bankable assets where real estate uh, can be securitized, um, also driven by uh, cost efficiencies, but also to increase uh, uh, liquidity of such assets uh, where we have marketplaces which can be easily scaled um, and then uh, analogous a lot of collectibles, luxury goods, such as old time and art, uh, as I think this will be coming in the near future, where you have marketplaces to easily invest in such kind of objects. And then uh, we talked about that in the last lecture, we have intangible assets, uh, such as patents and digital content, where we have a re representation. And um, here we have the distributed ledger as a temper resistance database that uh, provides us the needed security and non manipulation for uh, the uh, manipulation of intellectual property. 
and uh, that this new innovation has not only implications on processes but also on uh, new business models can be also seen in our uh, exemplary fintech analysis uh, really important uh, we are only selected uh, fintechs uh, the visualization is not exhaust exhaustive it's still ongoing uh, whatsoever you can already see uh, that uh, different areas has been established uh, a world ecosystem has been built around uh, the value proposition of uh, tokenization um, of course we have an uh, enhanced existing uh, product portfolio uh, we have new um, financial instruments and new products through cryptocurrencies for instance uh, therefore we have the area of asset management this had to be adapted uh, then of course we have the exchanges uh, and uh, which which support the trade uh, of such cryptocurrencies um, we also have initiatives where uh, the idea is to uh, implement or change the banking infrastructure uh, of course we have um, the companies who specialize on the token issuance uh, of these new kind of assets um, then we have uh, audits tax reporting of course consulting software development uh, as an important part the custody of the private and public key pairs and um, yeah it's, it's a really interesting and dynamics at the moment in the market and um, i think uh, there will be much more uh, such kind of um, fintechs and i can easily imagine that in the next years there will be also a consolidation where big banks try to also invest and also to acquire such kind of fintechs and of course the big question we want to answer is how to um, develop or enable uh, new services on basis of tokenization uh, therefore i want to introduce you um, to a so-called blueprint, blueprint for the tokenization uh, in this example we want to tokenize the car and then the first step uh, we want to model or have a look at the uh, value chain of the value creation processes which are associated um, during a life cycle of a car this would be on one side of car of course uh, purchasing a car where we have in the first step uh, the query where we are uh, going to uh, a test drive uh, where we have the contractual agreement then we have the delivery and then we get the invoice and of course uh, the car itself another uh, value chain process would be uh, a car insurance uh, mostly we do an online comparison and then we also uh, set up an inquiry uh, we have the contract preparation uh, the contract conclusion and uh, in the end uh, we decide for a specific offer um, the same uh, for the service and repair uh, journey a uh, customer journey uh, where we have of course uh, uh, the proposal preparation the error search the error correction and then we can uh, take the car back and drive with it and in order to um, conceptualize uh, a tokenization of a car um, we use a specific blueprint in this case in the center of attention of course the car life cycle and in the next step we uh, try to conceptualize all the participants uh, were associated uh, with uh, the processes uh, in the car life cycle for instance we have the dealership uh, we have the vendor we have of course investors then it comes to old timers or other luxury cars um, we have the bank involved and of course ourselves as the owner we have the insurer and um, in the next step uh, what is also important is uh, to somehow model the different activities uh, which are initiated uh, by the different participants uh, we have the bank uh, who uh, does a payment we have the insurer who insures the car um, we have a vendor who uh, also can rent uh, 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 the car and um, in this case uh, it's very interesting because now we have the possibility uh, to uh, ide ideate uh, first tokenization and this would be of course we can tokenize the ownership of the car we can tokenize the usage rights or um, we can represent the car itself 
and on this basis you can derive certain use cases uh, and uh, this would be uh, the ideation and use case finding process where we more or less can cluster specific activities um, which are associated during the usage of the token and uh, additionally we can identify the relevant participants and therefore we have three different uh, let's say tokenized e ecosystem use cases we can of course tokenize the car itself um, to increase transparency throughout the life cycle uh, of a car we have a dematerialization uh, of the physical object or more or less create a digital twin through a um, token uh, and additionally we can store and save relevant information about the car on the blockchain itself in a tamper resistant manner another use case uh, would be the tokenization uh, of the of ownership right and um, here we can separate the ownership uh, and the uh, possession the right for possession uh, to simplify the transfer when it comes to an investment uh, of course here we have also the traceability and transparency uh, when it comes to identify uh, other owners before uh, the car was sold or purchased and this is appropriate for a use case where we tokenize the car for investment and financing purposes the third use case um, would be the tokenization of the usage right uh, this is a really interesting case because we can use the token to access a specific service to um, drive the car itself and we had we have an automated and scalable platform for instance where we have the possibility um, to do automated car rentals and the platform could be even totally decentralized when it comes to a transaction management and one practical example um, of tokenizing a car is a car dossier project the idea is to collect information throughout the life cycle um, to create some kind of history with the relevant information and um, so we have a token that additionally stores this data uh, on a blockchain and the distributed ledger platform such as incidents such as uh, changes of ownership and these transactions are stored and the interesting thing is that you have a whole ecosystem with different participants you have insurance companies you have resellers manufacturers and every organization and every participant provides this kind of information for um, the consortium uh, you have some kind of yeah let's say collaborative business model and the idea is to increase the transparency and trust uh, throughout the reselling process and especially to provide a value add um, for the customer another interesting and widely discussed use case is uh, associated to the investment process uh, and here uh, it's widely discussed to use a token to represent a luxury sports car or um, a very expensive old timer and um, here you can use the ownership right uh, of a token to separate the physical object to digitize this kind of ownership right and to facilitate the trade of um, funds to facilitate the investment uh, and um, to implement this kind of use case you need uh, additional participants here you can see a facilitated model uh, around the ecosystem of course you have the car seller you have an insurer you have a car token smart contract provider and you have the investors uh, in the first place you need some kind of trustworthy certified partner who um, uh, does the physical safekeeping of a car um, he should be trustworthy because he um, assigns or initiates a process of assigning the physical object to the digital token in the next step um, you have the tokenizer the car tokenizer he uses a smart contract to create the ownership right uh, on the blockchain and on the token and then you can probably sell this token to investors 
And um, additionally, of course, you need an insurer if uh, something happens to the car. And um, once the investor uh, wants to use his ownership rights, he has to uh, seek uh, the certified partner and then he can probably go and use his car. Whatsoever, uh, this kind of model requires a specific uh, legal framework uh, in the near future because the certified partner as well as provider of the infrastructure and the provider of the smart contract need to be certified in a specific way. And um, uh, I think these kind of use cases uh, will play a major role in the near future. And um, yeah, this is the end of our third part of our lecture. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any remarks, please leave a comment and uh, looking forward to see you in the next one.